Okay. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon to everyone, and thank you for being here today. Today, we celebrate the anniversary of family and medical leave, um, uh, the date on which it was signed into law. Uh, so I'm so delighted to be with, with my colleagues and friends. Uh, we have, uh, I know Senator Duckworth is coming and Senator Smith, Congressman uh, uh, and Chair of, uh, well, Ranking Member now on Ways and Means. And uh, and in waiting, right, and, and, and Congressman Bobby Scott, uh, Sean Caston, and Congresswoman Lauren Underwood. And, of course, I, I want to give a big shout-out and a thank you to Senator Gillibrand. Um, we have been partners uh, in the Senate since 2013, uh, and I've been proud to fight alongside of her and now uh, with all of you to bring paid family and medical leave to every worker in America. Nearly 15 million workers take FMLA leave each year. Uh, family and medical leave has transformed our workplaces, but too many people are still left behind. Nearly 2.6 million people each year need leave, but do not take it because of fear of losing their job. An estimated 8.4 million people under FMLA's family definition are only protected for certain family members, but not all close loved ones, leaving their jobs unprotected. And about 10 and a half million workers each year need leave but do not take it. And two thirds, nearly seven million, say it is because they could not afford unpaid leave. So there's an overwhelming success with FMLA. Come on in, Senator. Uh, our work continues. And my colleagues joining today will discuss what they have been working on to address the barriers. For a decade, I've introduced in every Congress, along with Senator Gillibrand, the Family Act. It would create a comprehensive national program that helps meet the needs of all workers to take paid sick leave, care for a loved one or a new child, no matter the size of their employer. And yet, despite the years that have passed, the United States is the only industrial, industrialized nation with no family uh, a paid family and medical leave policy. So it's time we bring comprehensive paid leave uh, across the finish line. I also want to give a special shout out to Dawn Hucklebridge, Director at Paid Leave for All, and the Vice President for Economic Justice and National Partnership for Women and Families, Sharita Gruber. Thank you to Dawn and Sharita and all of the advocates that are here this morning. And I am going to take a second, if you don't mind, to talk about the groups who are representative. Paid Leave for All, the National Partnership for Women and Families, Family Values at Work, the Center for Law and Social Policy, National Council of Jewish Women, National Women's Law Center, the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers, Teamsters Rail Conference. We tried, guys. We tried, but we're not letting it go. Uh, Network the Lobby for Catholic Social Justice. So um, it's proud to really stand with all of you. This is such a personal issue for so many families. Um, personal for me. So many of you have heard my stories before. In 1986, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. I went to my employer at the time, and I told him I was going to be hospitalized, didn't know whether or not I was ever going to come back. And my employer was Senator Christopher Dodd. Uh, you know, God was watching over me. So, <laughs> But what he said to me on that day when I went into his office, Rosa, go get yourself well. Your job is here. Your salary is here. Don't worry. Focus on getting better. We had three kids all in school, and we're very much concerned. So you can imagine what a relief it was to be able to have that kind of a response. So with the support of family and friends, <laughs> grace of God, biomedical research, I recovered and have been cancer-free ever since. Then, uh, as his then chief of staff, I had the opportunity to work on family and medical leave, uh, which he introduced that same year. And after passage, President Bill Clinton signed it into law in 1993. Over five years ago, my mother, at age 103, was dying, and I got to spend every single day and night with her for six weeks. No one said to me, you're no longer a member of Congress. We're not going to get your check. is not going to be in the mail. You're not going to, you know, they didn't tell me I was going to receive no salary. No one said that my job would not be waiting for me. So when family and medical leave was introduced, we knew it should have always been paid. But the political environment at that moment, we couldn't, we, we couldn't get the votes. So we viewed it as a first step. 
We've been fighting for it uh, ever since. Uh, listen, we work for the American people. And regardless of our p political affiliation, the creation of a national paid leave uh, policy has strong support among all Americans. Ahead of the 2022 midterm elections, what the polling showed, support for paid family and medical leave increased. 81% of battleground voters support paid leave, parental medical leave for all U.S. workers. It's a double-digit jump in more than two years. Three-quarters of independent voters and over two-thirds of Republicans support it as well. Research shows about the favorable outcomes for workers, businesses, our economy, uh, when workers have access to paid leave. Uh, so, uh, and so many have said it helps them continue to work. 86% of parents with children under 12 say it helps keep them working. Working mothers who had to reduce their work hours during the pandemic, 53% said access to paid family leave helped them stay in the workforce. And we all know during the pandemic that women were pushed out of the workforce. They didn't opt out of the workforce. So today we're standing up uh, for, uh, again, for paid family leave. Uh, uh, I recently wrote a letter with my colleagues, Ranking Member Neal, Congresswoman Chrissy uh, Houlihan, requesting that paid family and medical leave be included in the fiscal year 2024 president's budget. We've had several calls with the White House, encouraged by productive conversations that we've had. Um, and uh, speaking of my colleague, Congresswoman Houlihan, she announced the creation of a bipartisan working group, and I know the senator is, is working on that as well. Uh, 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 Congresswoman Houlihan did, it, Houlihan did it in the House. Um, and so we're happy to work with people as we move forward. So thank you for joining me. And with that, we are eager to take your questions, but join me in please welcoming um, my partner in all of this since 2013, and that's Senator Gillibrand. Senator, please. Thank you. 